All right, and we are moving to the last speaker, uh, which is Peter Olson. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to address such an esteemed audience. I am a bit worried if the previous speaker compared himself to the last husband of Elizabeth Taylor. I wonder who I am. <laughs> anyway, I'm your last speaker of the day, and I'm going to talk about competitive advantage through documentation of sustainability, and I'm going to try and give you a few examples of this. I'm from an organization that you probably have not heard much about. That's because it's new. It came into effect this year. But you might have heard of the organizations that went into it. Aquafosk, Matfosk, Norconserve, and Fiskeforskning. These were uh, four of the biggest public food research institutes, and they have all been joined together into one big organization called Nofema. And this is, in a way, interesting because uh, it shows clearly that the challenges facing the different food sectors are very similar. And this is the reason why all these organizations have been joined. We found that when we work with sustainability, as I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, with traceability, but also with things like uh, food safety and marketing and branding, the, the sectors have a lot more in common, the different food sectors have a lot more in common than, than they have separating them. So in Norway, uh, the, go the government certainly found it sensible to join together all the food research institutes. And I'm from the organization called Nofima Market, which is situated in Tromsø, which incidentally is the cod farming capital of Norway. So I've uh, looked with very great interest on the previous presentations. I'm going to try and address a few questions. I hope that when my presentation is finished, that you will... Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is sustainability and something called environmental load. And I'm hoping to give you an insight into how sustainability is measured, how it's quantified. Uh, secondly, I'm going to talk about sustainability of production and of products. And as in particular, to try and identify what, what will we need to do if, we, if our ambition is to separate the good products from the bad products. And finally, I'll talk about competitive advantage and how the industry can uh, become competitive if they, do, if they use these tools that I've outlined previously. The previous speaker pointed correctly to uh, the fact that there are numerous definitions of sustainability. There are loads of them, and not all of them agree. But since I am from Norway, I have absolutely no choice but to relate to the definition made by the Brundtland Commission. And it says, it's very generic, it says that sustainable development is the concept of meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. Now, this is a fine overall definition, uh, but it's not very quantifiable. If we want to measure the negative effects that unsustainable development has on the environment, we need to be more concrete. So it's uh, useful to introduce the concept, what's called environmental load. Environmental load, or negative environmental impact, is defined in general as a disturbance in an ecological system caused by humans resulting in deviations from, from normal behavior. This takes us uh, a bit closer to something we can use for quantifying uh, uh, negative impact and for identifying good and bad products. Uh, specifically, when we talk about environmental load in production or caused by products, we want to do calculations on total product life cycles. This is also associated, this is often associated with something called life cycle assessment, but I won't go into detail on that here. We want to try and identify uh, resource use, land use, and emission of various gases and uh, pollutants into the environment. And we specifically want to see what impact this has on various areas, 
I won't mention all this, but certainly global warming is very relevant for this uh, conference, as is ozone layer depletion and also some of the other more general uh, polluting areas. So I won't go into detail more in this method. Let me just say that uh, calculation of environmental load has become more and more of a concrete science. It's now possible to take processes or products and go into very great detail uh, trying to calculate throughout the life cycle all these emissions, all these negative effects, and get some numbers with respect to how good or bad the product is. And this is exactly what a recent EU study called IPO did uh, about two years ago. They went into detail in a large project and they tried and they studied 283 product groups, tried to identify typical numbers, and this graph here shows uh, the uh, environmental load per euro. So the objective here was to identify, try to identify product, products where the environmental load, that is the negative impact, was high and the value of the product was low. Because those were the products where they uh, reckoned that there was significant uh, room for improvement. So these are the products numbered from, this is the this is the least uh, polluting product and going all the way to the most polluting product. And the only thing you should notice here, before I do something with this graph, is the enormous degree of variability. This number here is about 10,000 times higher than this one and about 100,000 times higher than this one. So there's an enormous degree of variability here. But listed like this, the graph doesn't really tell us much. It's more interesting if we start looking at what are these type of products. Well, the best products, this also includes services in a way, were those associated with running restaurants and hotels that has very low uh, emissions or correspondingly high, correspondingly high values. Education is a fairly sustainable thing to be doing. Recreation is not bad either. Communication, we're moving towards the middle of these products. Transport, maybe not as bad as you thought, perhaps because the value is high. Healthcare has more emissions or, or more environmental load per euro than transport, housing, furniture, clothing, production of tobacco, tobacco and narcotics, and I think and hope that you'll guess what the very last one will reveal here. What is the very, by far, the worst product groups when it comes to environmental load? Food products, by far. So the potential for improvement when it comes to sustainability the report says very clearly, is definitely highest in the food industry. It's in the food industry where we can do fairly simple things with low value products and reduce the emissions a lot. The food industry is also one of the industries where the variability between products and types are, are worst. Of those 283 products ranked in this graph here, uh, the very highest, the most polluting one is production of meat. The second highest is uh, production of dairy, dairy products. Fish is not so bad as the others, but the report points out explicitly that they have not taken into account the depletion of resources. They have not taken into account the threat to extinction of fisheries and so on. That's not something that's calculated here. So if that had been taken into account, fish and seafood products would have been worse, would have been further to the right here. 